from the News Channel 5 Network. This is KFASA Nashville. Bienvenidos and welcome to KFASA Nashville. I'm excited for our annual holiday um, show where we feature the beauty of the food and traditions of a Latin American country and this year we're going to feature Mexico, Mexico. Today I have Dr. Um, Alicia Griffin who is a general yes. family dentistry. Yes. Thank you very much and her mm -hmm. daughter Diane John Bosch um, and they're both joining me in celebrating Mexico both here for, live in Nashville and have brought in for a very long time you both live here. So mm -hmm. Dr. Griffin I want to start with you. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and what brought you to Nashville and where are you originally from? Okay, I'm originally from Tamaulipas, Mexico. Tamaulipas, okay. Yes, uh, and I was, um, because of the education, we had to move to Monterey, Mexico, and I was mostly raised in Mexico. I came to the United States in 1966 and I continued furthering my studies and uh, I got married. And to an American? To, uh, to an American, to okay. John Griffin. Okay. And initially we were living in Rockford, Illinois. Then we moved to Arkansas and uh, in different areas. And I had my, my beautiful children, my daughter. And, and what and year did you come to Nashville? Uh, I came to Nashville in 1985. I, I used to work as associate for uh, Dr. Lund, a very nice dentist here. And then I purchased the building in 1985. And I've been there in the Harding Mall area. So Cornerstone Oral Health Care is your um, practice yes. in mm -hmm. um, the Nolansville Harding. And being bilingual opportunity because of the growth of the Latino community, do you see both the community as well as the Latinos that are coming here? Yes, initially I thought I was the only Hispanic. You were. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then when they, they came to the house, she was about nine years old, they were very excited and she and her daddy and they saw some Hispanics there, mm -hmm. and they helped them to translate. And that's when I found out that they were. So Diane, being um, born into a Mexican-American family like myself, my mother's from Mexico, my father's American, uh, and growing up in Nashville, that must have been very different. So what are some of the traditions you remember um, growing up in Nashville being Mexican-American, but also not many people like you around, I'm assuming that. Yeah, no, there, there were not very many people. Um, like me for a long time I didn't realize I was different but I remember uh, celebrating all of the of course American holidays because my dad was um, a Southern American so from we, Arkansas from Arkansas and that's where I was born so I grew up the first few years uh, in Arkansas so we did we uh, celebrated very traditionally Christmas tree uh, the southern food you know home you know cooking and everything but when it came to the holidays, we would have that little bit of a split because then we would enjoy the tamales. We would enjoy all of the, the hearty, warm, spicy food that I remember from when we lived in Mexico when I was very, very young. So that, you know, that was the, the thread that held us together with family that we still had in Mexico and still, you know, kind of kept it relevant and new. And the culture and, mm -hmm. and um, the, the food, is, of course, is very important as well as to connect back and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about the food you, you brought here. Very traditional um, food that I grew up with as well, some of these. So let's talk first about these drinks. What exactly are these? So we have um, ponche. One, yeah. ponche. Ponche, which is traditionally... I'm going to give you one. Christmas okay. time. I did not grow up with season. ponche. What's in ponche? So ponche is kind of reminiscent of a, a mm. cider. Yes. Very. So it's got a lot of different fruits. It depends on what region you're from. So it always has sugar cane. So a big chunk of sugar cane in there, piloncillo, which is um, a non-processed brown sugar okay. from the sugar cane it, instead of traditional sugar. And then just whatever fruit you have available. Some people do prunes and grapes and tejocotes, which are like little apples, but uh -huh. they're not sweet. Uh, you really wouldn't want to eat them any other time because they don't have a flavor, but uh -huh. in Boncha they're really, really good. Uh, very, so. very, very uh -huh. tasty. Yes. Not too sweet, um, but traditional um, ponche, like punch, but mm -hmm. ponche. Um, but I think that I think I remember um, eating the, the sugar cane afterwards. I think that was yes. the thrill of it all, I believe, is, is this after you drink it, being able to drink the sugar cane. Very traditional mm -hmm. ponche for the holidays. Cinnamon taste. You can, yes. The whole house smells like cinnamon afterwards. Yes. I swear I felt smelled like I was in Kirkland's. <laughs> that smell <laughs> of cinnamon. Yes. I just, it does smell. It tastes just like that. But this is also mm. very, very traditional. Yes. So very this is champurrado. Ch champurrado. Yes. Which is um, our version of a hot chocolate. 
which use the abuelita chocolate, which has cinnamon and oh, nutmeg. Abuelita chocolate, yes. I remember that brand. Um, and then it thickens up because you put a little bit of cornmeal. So let's talk about this because um, I know one of our local restaurants, Cheesemus, um, offers this a lot, which is very rare. And they also mm -hmm. put half of it in coffee, and it's a different type of coffee. Yes. And that's what usually I order. So again, what is? It's a different type of chocolate. It's, Abuelitas is a brand name. Yes, it's very, a brand. Very much recognized it's in Mexico. It's a Mexican. And pretty much, it's a little round cake. It's mm -hmm. a little cake of dark chocolate, but it already has sugar and cinnamon. Okay, that's, that's key. the key. The cinnamon in there. So, but it's it's very rich. It's not the traditional American mm. hot chocolate. This, this very, is very distinct flavorful. taste from Abuelitas. Mm -hmm. I I remember growing up with. Um, and so this is very good. I, like I said, we have a, um, a restaurant, Cheese Mist, that mm -hmm. I know we go to a lot, but has features a lot of these items here. So if anyone's interested, um, Cheese Mist on Nolensville Road is a very great thing. So obviously the drink, it, it stirs up the smells of the house. Mm -hmm. But as of any holiday tradition that you probably taught her how to make is pasole. Pasole <laughs> is, oh my gosh, this is the food to have. Um, that I, be, I have every Christmas Eve, every mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, and then special in occasions. Between. Yeah, <laughs> in between. So tell me about pozole, uh, a traditional soup. But. Uh, well, this is a, the green, the verde pozole. There's also a red one. It just depends on which pepper you use. So it's got hominy, which pozole means hominy. Yes, um, remember so that. Pozole means hominy. Hominy. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is with chicken. Um, people make it out of pork, with beef, you know, whatever your favorite meat is. Um, we just always did chicken and so it's just this soup with chili peppers and then you just load it so with let's veggies. say I grew up with um, pozole mostly beef mm -hmm. and mostly red mm -hmm. same taste though with just a different flair but what's very I mean this is probably the bowl, typical bowl that we usually serve ourselves in but it's really exciting is that you add all these items in there is that yes. correct so you always add a little bit of onions pre-chopped we did not add this is cabbage is that correct yes you can add lettuce, but cabbage doesn't wilt as quickly. Ah, so there you because go. the pozole is very, Radishes. very hot. Oh yes. my goodness! And so, and of course, um, we have the uh, avocado, which is a key ingredient to any Mexican um, mm -hmm. dish. Is our our lovely avocado. And so, when we have the avocado, um, it's hot. We stir it up. We um, and it's something that's eaten all night mm -hmm. and always on the kitchen. It's in a big, big, yes. big um, uh, bowl that's always hot, served hot. Now, did mm -hmm. you teach her how to make this? This old we're, we're <laughs> laughing. Look, I am a mom. I'm a good friend. I'm a professional. <laughs> but Mama didn't cook that yeah. much. Always so, busy. Well, but you but learned she, it. But I learned. I learned. My goodness, mm -hmm. she's an excellent So, do cook. you? Is it hard? I know you have children. Is it? Do you yeah. try to teach them some of these? Traditions are they ready I to learn do. or just kind of like love the food and maybe learn later? They, you know, the the thing is, in the kitchen, I think it's it's very key, especially in the Latino kitchen. The mom begins to do something and you automatically, oh, give me this, give me that, oh, you come over here. So inevitably, the children end up in the mix too. So that's kind of how they learn. I remember being little and my mom oh would my be grandma. working, my grandma abuelita would begin to make things, and all of a sudden you hear. Yeah. Oh, she's making tortillas? <laughs> yeah. And, or she'd Hot pull out. Uh -huh. yeah. So then all of a sudden, my mom would have to, oh, yeah, and, you know, I have to help her. And then uh -huh. I'd be there. So all of a sudden, we'd be an assembly line making tamales. Right. Mm -hmm. Or we'd yes. be, oh, grab the tortillas and wrap them up. So, mm -hmm. so it's it a pulls family. You in. Mm -hmm. It pulls you in. You sit there mm -hmm. having the stories. The cell phones are, on the, are um, you know, far no away. Cell phones. You have the flower. <laughs> and I think that's what the traditional Latino family is about familia, yes. comida, mm -hmm. you know, yes. food, and that is also what is, uh, I think, bonds us a lot together. Yeah, very much. Um, mm -hmm. So let's continue to talk about, which is my favorite, los tamales. The tamales oh, yes. are, um, kind of tell me about each of these. So this is the red tamale, which is the corn husk. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is what takes a lot of time because I remember the assembly lines of tamales. Yes. And tell me about each of them. So uh, the one in the corn husk oh, okay. is made out of the cornmeal and it's, uh, you know, the corn husk it takes, you have to soak it because it's very hard so to put the masa in and then you put the, the in, you know, what's on the inside. Now the one in the green, Oops, that's a banana leaf. That gives it a very different flavor. So it's very earthy, very organic. It tastes very green. Uh, and I mean, you can do pork, chicken. Uh, w at home, I make them out of, so I'll make mole, uh -huh. which is, you know, yeah, like you a, a gravy uh, made from peppers and a lot of different spices and chocolate that you put on the chicken. So after I make mole in my home with rice and everything else on the side, whatever's left over, I make tamales with. 
So. Wow, I've never done it that mm -hmm. way. So when we do the tamales, it's, it's the, the masa, which is a specific mm -hmm. type of cornmeal. Mm -hmm. And you can find it now, which is really yes. the Mexican brands yes. in the Kroger's or any oh, of the yes. Mexican restaurants. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, grocery stores, which you never used to be able to find before. Hard. So the masa is the main thing, the cornmeal, mm -hmm. and how you make it, you, you know, the beef, the chili, however you make it, green, red. And um, and it's the process of putting the masa on the husk, folding mm -hmm. the husk like a little diaper, and then stacking them up and steaming them. Mm -hmm. yes. um, that was the process I remember growing up. And, and, and just the smell. And, and you're waiting for them, and yes. it's not ready. And yeah, she still does that. Yeah, I know, yeah. and I think it's the same. I think it's like a, you want your children to learn it and, and be part of that family. And so, do you? have that sense when you eat them you remember back in Mexico oh yes, oh, yes. Uh -huh. so I think that's I think again what food the does cousins, tradition now um, so mm -hmm. these are the tamales once again I have to have lime I don't know why but I grew up with lime trees in Mexico my <laughs> yeah. abuelita um, we called her mama Nina um, in Obregón Sonora they had lime trees and lime whoops was put on everything my yes. pozole and I don't everything. know if that's just why uh -huh. why is that is it just because there's lime everywhere it's just I think so lime and limes are so good I mean the, in, in Mexico, traditionally, if you're going to have a snack, whether it's chips or popcorn or anything, beer, <laughs> beer, yeah. beer oh, yeah. anything, <laughs> lime makes it better. Lime so, and chili. So well, I'm excited. I'm going to eat this in a bit and stuff like that. So um, which one is your traditional? You like the red or the green? Oh, my or both? goodness. I like both. So in New mm -hmm. Mexico, where yes. I grew up, even though my mother's from Mexico, um, what we have is we can order Christmas tamales. That means oh, one red, one yes. green. Oh, nice. That's what we call them. And so you can order them anytime you want tamales. You can say red, green, or Christmas. And wow. they bring you a combination of both. That's it's just a, it's a word we use throughout the year because green chili is very big and, and New Mexico yeah. as well. So, mm. Okay, so we're going to continue talking. And now we're going to get into the dessert area. Mm -hmm. So um, what are these called? Buñuelos. Buñuelos, okay. <laughs> yes. So it is what? Well, it is uh, flour, and uh, usually you, you cook it. it. It depends of what kind of oil. If you are into watching your weight, what is it that you use, Diane? Oh, <laughs> I use grapeseed oil. Grapeseed mm -hmm. oil, okay. It's a little yeah, bit lighter. It doesn't yeah. have a, a heavy flavor. But if, you're, if you don't care about your weight, you just yeah. put it so in you fry regular it? oil. Yes, you mm -hmm. fry it and then you take it out and you dry it. You put it in one of these napkins. Okay, so in a soap. way they're a little harder. I know I grew up with ah. sopapillas, which are the poofiness, Same more thicker cut. Yes. This mm -hmm. is a more a crunchy cut, the same uh -huh. taste. Yes, but crunchy. Crunchier. And we sprinkle salt, I mean cinnamon sugar. And sugar. <laughs> sugar and cinnamon. Sugar and cinnamon, and it was delicious. But these here, <laughs> these are from the south. So that's in the northern part of Mexico. Okay. It's very much, you know, the cinnamon and sugar on everything. Now mm. these are from the south part of Mexico, which traditionally they make this, they call it miel, which means honey. So, so this is honey. piloncillo. Uh -huh. with water, yes. um, which makes a simple syrup. Okay. And then they add either an orange rind or lemon leaves, almost to make a tea, and so it gives it a very oh citrusy God, a whole flavor. Thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to continue talking to Dr. Griffin and um, Diane John Bosch about the traditions of Mexico and how we're going to put that in with Nashville and how, where you can enjoy some of this food. We'll be right back. Sí,